Greetings from Snake Mountain Boat Works on Wednesday, February 14. Major milestone day for the 1957 23-foot Lyman runabout. The bottom is now ready for bottom paint, the anti-foul copper bronze Lyman uh, bottom paint. And I'm going to hand it off to RJ so that he can catch you up. It's been a, a while since uh, we've done any reporting on this Lyman. So, RJ, take it away. All right. Um, I started by uh, stripping all the paint off the bottom, uh, right down to bare wood, and as clean as I could get it. Uh, that took quite a while because this is a big boat, and there's a lot of streaks on it. And they were a lot of paint, lots of paint. Yep. Um, we then I sanded it with a flat board and tried to get it all as flat as I could with the flat board. Uh, then I took premium filler, um, 3M Marine Premium Filler. It's for above and below the water line, uh, and I where you see all these nail holes. The bottom was the same way. I uh, fared all the edges of the board in where the nail holes are. It, it took four four applications, right? Yeah. To, yeah. Uh, and then I sanded it smooth again, as flat as I could with the flat board, and then it was ready to be sealed with CPS. Uh, sealed all the whole bottom with CPS. Uh, then I primed the first coat on it. Um, while doing that, there was a Dutchman that John had to put in right here. It's kind of hard to see. I hope that's good. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. But this wood right here was all split and broken and cracked. There's some carriage bolts that go through to the inside. Big carriage bolts with big heads on them, and they had just blown this piece apart. Um, I think there's one here. I got put in because the front was all smashed up and there's one along the bottom here because this was all smashed in. Um, once that was done we fared that and sealed that in. Then uh, with all the most of these big linemans you've always noticed they have a hard time steering and it's really hard to maneuver them around especially at a slow speed. Um, so, a couple other boats we installed these. This is a piece of, uh, started out as eight quarter uh, oak. That's quarter sawn oak, right? White oak. oak. Yep. And uh, we planed it out and sawed it down, and we uh, installed half inch carriage bolts that go in through here, up through the keel, and then they have a big, huge nut on the top of them to keep this from moving at all. And uh, we sealed it on with 5200 before we installed it. Um, and I took premium filler and filled all the holes where the heads and bolts were so that water can't get in there and penetrate that at all. Um, it, and that's all been sealed with CPES yeah. as well? Yeah. Yep, this whole thing has. Um, what did you use as a, a primer, RJ? Uh, Tyco primer. It's a Pettit specialty Tyco primer. I don't know if the new stuff is called specialty, but it's got the same number on the new stuff. So uh, it's what we've used on pretty much anything we're going to put an anti fouling top of or anti foul paint on, period. Uh, and I got first coat on the keel this morning. Um, second coat will go on later on tonight, and then tomorrow it'll be ready for its first coat of paint. Um, in the back on the transom, there is the lap joint where the, this plank laps over this. And there was a seam here that was opened up quite a bit, as you can see. Now, I think it was about half the thickness of my finger. 
That, that's that. pretty typical on the Lyman transoms we've done, especially the early ones. Because yep. this, this is a plank transom, unlike the later Lymans, which were a single sheet of plywood. Right. This is a solid board. And this board goes up in and then behind this board. And this board laps out over this. And then there's a lap joint there. And over the years of the transom going up and down and the swelling and contracting, they seem to open up a little bit here. And you used uh, uh, Interlux seam sealer? Seam compound. Seam yeah. compound, yeah. And, and I did along here with it too, where there was a little bit of openings so now, no water can get in. We've had boats come in where people have tried to address this issue using uh, 5200. And the problem with that is that once the 5200 cures, of course, it w will no longer expand and contract. It becomes really hard. And what typically happens is that it just breaks out in places and then begins trapping water behind it and actually is a negative repair. Uh, we've had to, I think it was knock on wood, we had to, we had to end up replacing this whole bottom plank yep. because of the 5200 that had been paid into this uh, seam and failed and and water just kept working behind it working behind it and rotted this rotted this plane the framing behind that the seam compound stays flexible yeah and i can still push on it i can push on it now or in a month then to the touch it's going to be dry on the surface but if i push on it, i can actually push it in a little bit yeah um, so probably Friday, we'll be able to put the first coat of uh, bottom paint on her? Yep. yep. Maybe tomorrow afternoon. We'll, we'll apply three coats of the anti file for the initial application. Um, RJ also was, had the, the dubious honor of cleaning the rock guard the rudder and the prop and prop shaft. Uh, if I remember right, the, the rock guard and the rudder had almost a quarter of an inch of paint. I still have one side of the rudder that hasn't been stripped. Yeah, it's been stripped. That's what we were dealing with before. These are bronze. Uh, if you wish to apply some anti-foul to these, for cosmetic purposes, that's fine, but the water is is not going to do anything uh, to this what material. What you're going to do is color it like your prop is here. It's right. Patina. It makes it dark, but it doesn't. My thought is, as far as like certain things, that thing right there. If you have anti-foul paint on it, it is going to go through the water, but if it's shiny and smooth like that, it's going to go through better. Yeah, it lowers the, uh, the, the friction between the, the rock guard, the rudder, and the water. So, here we are on Wednesday, February 14, a major milestone for this really excellent, very, very original, very solid. Uh, you can look at these strakes and see that unlike so many of the uh, old style Lymans that have lots and lots of age on them, this plywood by now is, well, it's kind of wavy. And in this case, uh, with all the ribs being strong, this is a narrow a strake uh, hull, so the ribs are on narrower centers than the standard hull. She is really true, really straight, and we can't wait to get the NI foul on so that we can begin working on her above the waterline. Actually, got twice as many clinch nails in this boat as a That's right. straight tall. Yeah, they they are every inch and a half. Yeah, every inch and a half, and on the bottom, RJ and I went through, and every place there was any suspicion of looseness to the clench nails, we uh, re-clench them and reset them. 
So uh, she'll still, I mean, she's a lineman, she'll soak up. I mean, there's no way you put a 5200 bottom on a lap strike hull, but she's really tight and she should soak up very quickly and be quite dry thereafter. So that's our update on Wednesday the 14th on the 1957 23 foot Lyman runabout. Just a wonderful example of the old style Lyman. Thank you so much. Bye bye for now from Snake Mountain Boatworks.